Heart Sprinkle. Welcome back to Heart Sprinkle. Today I'm going to show you guys the modified block stitch I did for this graph GAN. I currently have a unicorn C2C cow going on and members in the group requested for a horizontal version of the pattern. Some people are doing single crochet but I decided to do the block stitch and I'll show you guys how I modified that technique to do this graph GAN. Before we get started, let's talk about the block stitch. This is how it is normally worked, where you chain a set of double crochets, and then you have the setup chain. Then you repeat double crochet, setup chain, double crochet, setup chain. And that's how the block stitch is worked. I tried it in this method with the white in between each one but I did not like how it was starting to look. Also, I didn't like having to reattach the white for this set of chain here, and I didn't want a whole bunch of tails just from doing all those changes every row, so I tried something different. Here on my blanket, for my first row, I did a foundationless double crochet. Then here I have the setup chain, and I continued on with the block. To do a block, each one consists of three double crochets, and then you have a row of the setup chain, and then three double crochets. So each block on the graph, if you're following a graph, will consist of three double crochets. Since we are modifying the block stitch with the foundationless double crochet, you will need to add two extra double crochets. On each side of every row, you will have this extra chain three or double crochet, and that is gonna be your border. You can always add a border here, but that's the purpose of it. You can either just leave it and it's just a border, or you can add on and sew onto this without messing up this block. So that's why those are there. When we do this foundationless double crochet row, you need to add these two extra double crochets. So for you to figure out how many double crochets you need to start with on your first row, count the amount of blocks you have for your graph. For example, let's pretend that mine is five squares wide so five times three is 15, but you need to add on those two extra chain two or double crochets to the border. So that'll be a total of 17 double crochets. This first row is important because you need to have the right count to do the rest of the rows from then on. I'm still using these giant clothespins that I got from the Dollar Tree. I like them because you can clip the bobbin onto the blanket and not have it tangle when you flip. I do have about 20 bobbins on my blanket right now, so if you load them up a lot, it'll be heavy. Now that I'm looking back, I have loaded too much of some colors, but I hate having to reattach yarn too often, so I'd rather deal with that than reattach the yarn. So it really depends on the design you have, but the reason why I have so many is because of the hearts I have going on on my graph. This video will only show you the technique I used to do the block stitch for this graph can. I have not decided if I wanted to do an actual crochet along video of the unicorn blanket design I have, but if you are interested in that video, please write in the comments down below and let me know. Let's get started on the block stitch. I'm not gonna follow a specific graph today, I'm just gonna show you guys the technique, but you should be able to watch this video and use this method for any graph you want to follow. For this tutorial, I'm using an eye hook and worsted weight yarn that's already loaded in my bobbin. 
We're going to start the first row with foundationless double crochets. Start off with a slip knot, chain four, This will count as your first double crochet. We're going to yarn over, put the hook into the very first chain, but pick up two loops. Yarn over, pull through two. The tension on this side is important. If it's too tight, your piece will start to bow. So make sure you pull it up slightly and that way it can be parallel to the other stitches that you've already made. We have three loops on our hook. We're gonna yarn over, pull through one. It is very important you do this part or your stitch will be wrong. Now let's finish the double crochet. We have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And that is your double crochet. Now let's make another double crochet. We're going to yarn over and stick our hook in that first chain we made, always picking up two loops. Yarn over, pull through two. Make sure the tension is correct by pulling it out just a little bit. Yarn over, pull through one. That's the very important chain right there. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, now let's do one more. Yarn over, put the hook in that first chain. Make sure you pick up two loops. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through one. Now let's finish the double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. We have made our first block. This is our first block. This is that extra on the side that I mentioned before. I am going to make only five blocks for this tutorial, so I need to make 12 more, but add the other border side. So that's a total of 13 more double crochets. Here's what two blocks will look like. The other three blocks I'll be making, I am switching to pink. Here I have finished off my last double crochet. I'm going to make the other three blocks in pink, so I'm gonna show you how to do the color change on the first row. I finished off the double crochet here. I made a slip knot with my new color, and I'm attaching that pulling it through this last loop we made of the previous double crochet and pull that closed. Now we're going to continue with our next double crochet. Yarn over, put in the chain here with the two loops, yarn over, pull through two, straighten it out, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, I'm going to make two more. That is one block of pink. I'm going to pull this blue tighter and that hides the change much better. I'm going to continue with two more blocks. Don't forget to add the one extra double crochet for the border. This is what this row looks like. I did have to straighten it out a little bit but I made sure that the tension was correct for it to lay straight and flat. Now we're gonna do our setup chain. It consists of one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet, chain two, one single crochet, chain two. We will do our setup chain and follow the colors all the way across and switch when the color changes. Here's how I did the setup chain. When I'm finished with this row, chain one, turn our work. Single crochet into the top of this double crochet. Single crochet in between 
these two double crochets. Chain two. Skip three double crochets and single crochet into this space. Chain two. Skip three double crochets and single crochet in this space between the two double crochets. Not the chain at the top, in between the stitches. Chain two. Count the three double crochets and single crochet into this space. Now we need to switch colors. So we're gonna take the blue, make sure you pulled it tight so that color change is hidden. Yarn over and pull through the pink loop. Before you go any further, pull that loop closed. Now chain two. Skip these three double crochets and single crochet into this space. Chain two. Another set of three. Single crochet into that space. And when you reach the side stitch right here, this border stitch, we're going to do a single crochet at the top chain. So this is what the stitches are looking like. This is our setup chain. When you start doing these in the future rows, this is where you will be crocheting the double crochets into this space. To do our next set of blocks, we need to go back and do our double crochets in these chain spaces. So to start the next row of blocks, we're going to chain three. This is going to be part of our border stitches. Continue making double crochets, three in each chain two space. There is no chain here. You just continue doing the double crochets all the way across making sure that there are three double crochets in each chain space that we have made. Now we need to do a color change. My yarn tail is down here. When it is down here, we need to do a chain three. Always pull your yarn from the back and bring it to the front. So I'm gonna stick my hook in, pull it from the back there, and bring it through the front like this, okay? Now we're gonna chain three, but I'm gonna show you what you have to do on that last chain. One, two, on the last chain, we're gonna yarn over, pull through the pink and the blue. Two double crochets to finish this block. All right, this is our last chain from the blue. We just pull it tight to hide that color change better, and that's how it'll look. Now I'm going to continue with the pink. To keep my bobbins organized, I wrap it up, put it in between like this, and then clip it onto the blanket, and that keeps it from unraveling. I've reached the end here, we're going to double crochet into this stitch, which is the first single crochet we did for the chain setup. Like so. Now we need to do another chain setup. So chain one and turn your work. Single crochet into the top of the previous double crochet single crochet in the space between the first and second, double crochet, chain two, single crochet in between the blocks here. 
Now you will start to see the blocks a little better than you did in the first row. Chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet. Keep your tail at the front here when you do your chain setup. Now we're going to switch to the blue. Make sure that it's tight, that you pulled it closed there. Yarn over, pull through the pink loop, pull that pink loop shut. Chain two. It's easier to see these blocks now, so you can just single crochet in those spaces. Chain two, single crochet in this space, and single crochet at the top of that chain three. Now we're going to work on our next set of blocks. So we're going to chain three, three double crochet into the chain space. I'm going to pretend that I need the pink here, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that. The pink tail is on this side. We're going to bring it to this chain space. Now our tail is at the bottom, so we need to chain three. And on that third chain, pull through the pink and the blue. We're going to do the rest of our double crochets. Be sure to crochet over this pink tail. Don't forget to pull this blue tight. I'm going to do the rest in dark pink. Now I need to make my chain set up again. Chain one. Don't forget, first single crochet is in the chain. Single crochet in the space chain two, single crochet in the space, chain two, single crochet in the space, chain two. I only did two double crochets there. Be sure you do three in every chain space. <laughs> single crochet, change the color, tighten the pink, I've noticed that tightening the previous chain first before doing your chain two um, matters. Now we are good to go for our next set of blocks. I'm going to do one block of blue. I should have made sure that this pink was pulled in the back, but it's okay. I'm going to add this light pink. We're gonna make a slip knot, slip it into this blue, tighten the blue a little bit. When your color tail is up here, you're going to do regular double crochets. When your tail is down here, you have to chain up. So chain three when it's down here. Our dark pink tail is right here and we need to move it over here. So what we're going to do is do our regular double crochets over this tail. Okay. Now we will tighten this blue. Close that off like that. And now we are switching back to this dark pink. So we need to pull it through the chain two space like so, and chain three. And remember, on that third chain, we slip through this pink loop and the light pink loop. Two double crochets to finish the block. And then tighten. I'm gonna finish off this row. Now we will continue with our chain setup. I just finished off my chain setup over here. Let's say I want a different color above this blue. So I'm attaching this white, I'm making a slip knot. 
I have my one chain there and I am slipping that on and pulling that tight and I'm going to continue with the chain three or two if you prefer to. Let's say you want this blue above this light pink. You're just going to bring it over and crochet on the tail or over the tail. Okay. So that's one white block. Now we need to crochet over this pink tail and bring the blue to the front from the back like that. Chain three and don't forget that last chain goes through the blue and the white. Two double crochet. Make sure you're going crocheting over this light pink tail. Okay. And pull. Now we're doing the light pink and we need to crochet over this dark pink tail. Always have the yarn coming from the back. Chain two, last chain through both. Colors. I'm all tangled up because I didn't care to organize my bobbin just now. Finish off this block and now we're going to tighten this blue. And now we're going to finish off with the dark pink. Alright everyone, so this is how it's looking. You can always pull the yarn over and bring it over. I only suggest bringing it over two blocks. I feel like if you go any further um, it'll be too far. I don't know. I don't feel comfortable jumping too many blocks when I drag it over like that. But it's really your preference and your call. Now you can still do the large jumps like I do in the C2Cs. And let me show you guys how I do that. So let's pretend that you don't need this white anymore. And the, I call it like a long jump. I just make a tail long enough like so and do a new slip knot here. And then just attach this white over here. And like I said, that's a long jump if you're wanting that color, don't need it anymore. Um, and you still want it attached, we're just going to do our switch like so. Okay, and pull the pink tight here, and that's how it looks. All right, so when you do the long jump, you have this long tail that you can cut later on and sew into place. Um, it just prevents you from cutting right now and sewing the ends in right away. So it just saves just a little bit of time. All right, everybody, this is what the block looks like. I know it's not as pretty as this blanket that I already have started here, but those are the methods and techniques I used to do this blanket. I hope it was helpful. Please let me know in the comments down below if you liked it and if you're interested in the crochet along videos in the block stitch. Thanks so much for checking out this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!